Is there an easy sniff test to help you figure out if you're being charged fake fees at a car dealership? Yes, and since I receive thousands of car contracts every year from my viewers, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. Once you know this stuff, your spidey sense will go off every time a dealer tries to hit you with a fake fee. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the homework guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Welcome to the home of super high intensity training on how to buy and sell new or used cars, courtesy of the homework guy team. When it comes to smart car buying, you just can't beat super high intensity training and this graduate level shirt is available now in the links right down below. If you're a first timer here, consider subscribing and leave us a comment below Add hashtag the homework guy. If you'd like a response directly from me or one of my staff members, we are always glad to help our compliments. You can also email me at info at the homework guy dot com with a specific question. Or if you'd like a free car contract review, just black out your personal information and use the same email. Well, let's roll. Many of you have asked if there's a way to quickly and easily determine if a fee comes from your city, county or state or if that pesky little fee is just made up by the dealership you are shopping with. You know, those unsavory fees added on in the last minute to boost dealer profits. The answer is a resounding yes. yes, and you're going to need a calculator to figure it out. You see, if you look closely at your car contract, the only thing that is not being taxed are city, county, and state fees like title transfer fees and licensing fees. Nobody likes to pay fees, but at least those fees are charged and wasted by your local government and are otherwise known as the legitimate fees on a car contract. You could also think of them as the fees the dealer has no choice but to charge you and they will simply be sending them along to your local government offices. Aww. Any other fees put on your contract by the dealership is just an attempt by the dealership to jack up the cost of the car after you already negotiated sale price and these fees are fake. You'll know they're fake because they are taxed and that's a dead giveaway that the dealer is using fees to pad the profits on the deal. You see, the state taxes every added product, including fees, because that's money that's changing hands and the state isn't collecting it themselves. So how does the state view all those fake fees? <laughs> You're essentially buying them. You're being sold a fee. Isn't that nice? If you like being sold fees, well, how about if I charge you $500 for watching this video? A little $500 fee, and then you can use the link down below to send it to me. How wonderful is that, huh? Smart people see fake fees as an underhanded way of making a $20,000 car with $2,000 in fees turn into a $22,000 car, because that's all it is. I'll show you some examples of this and exactly how you handle it in just a moment. However, I want to quickly handle those trolls that come here from my dealer followers. For all you salesmen visiting here today, you use car managers, general managers, finance officers, dealer owners, specifically those of you who like to troll here and complain about the information I share with my audience, well, this is for you, but also more helpful information for my followers. You dealer associates will say, Kevin just doesn't like us to make a profit. He doesn't understand business. It's the same old tired wine, and I've heard it a thousand times. You're totally wrong. Anyone with a head on their shoulders recognizes that profits are needed for any business. What I'm against, are you actually listening? What I'm against is your practice of pretending the sale price of the car is X, and then padding X with a bunch of fees after the fact. That's exactly what I'm against. Your cat and mouse game. Why can't you just come clean and say you need to make money, so here's the price of the car? So you can make money. Why all the acting, the smoke and mirrors, the game playing, the fake fees? You think I don't understand business? Of course I do. What I'm saying is that you don't understand ethics. There's a flaw in your character. If you missed what's wrong, let me illustrate. Every Kool-Aid drinking salesman or dealer employee brings the same old tired stories. What about margins at Walmart or Best Buy, you ask? It's as if you are really that stupid and you really think it's a complaint against profits by your car buyers. Here's what I want you to do if you really believe that. Go to any store, any place or product you want to compare margins with, and give me an example of any customer who bought something and had the cashier say, well, your total price is 100 bucks, but then we had to add in our in-store merchandising fee, which adds another $10, plus our delivery fee of $12 for the truck that brought it here, then there's the advertising fee right here, another five bucks, because that's how you knew to come into the store today. And 
Then there's an aged inventory fee of $5 because you didn't come soon enough and a $12 document fee because you asked for a receipt and we have to pay all those staff members that are sitting upstairs. So your pre-tax total comes to $144. Of course, there's tax too, which brings your total to $161. Every buyer in America would take that stuff, set it down or throw it in your face and say, you can keep it. And that's exactly what I'm saying to you and what every person who's come to this channel is saying to you, stop the game playing. Give a straight up price in the first place or you can just keep it. Now, let's take a look at those car contracts. They are real contracts received in the last few days. It's stuff happening right now in current market conditions in the car business. Follow along. If you didn't get how to do this from my earlier explanation, I'll do the math for you on these contract examples and show you anything else that I wouldn't have paid for either. Here are several illustrations between fake and legitimate fees, also known as the taxable and non-taxable fees. The clue sits right in your tax total, and here's how you figure it out. All right, this first contract is a 2016 Nissan GTR. The sale price, 74988 First of all, if you negotiated a sale price of 74988 which you didn't, this looks like exactly the price that was on the window of this vehicle. Not a very smart deal here, but anyway, I digress. Let's talk about the fees that are showing up down here in the contract. This dealer is doing something very slimy. It says taxable fees estimated $149.95. But when you look down the categories, here are tag fee and dealer fee, $79 and $899. Those are also taxable fees. The dealer has created a, a category in which they put other taxable fees in and then itemize those other fees down below and they are also taxable fees. Then you notice that the tax calculated, the $4,612.22 is tax calculated on the sale price of $74,988 and the addition of all those fees that you're seeing up there above. And so subsequently, while the negotiated price was $74,988, the dealer's actually charging you a sale price of $76,115.95. All right, let's move on to the next contract. This is a 2017 Toyota Tacoma. The sale price, $29,995. Again, this isn't a number that a customer arrives at, so apparently you failed to do a negotiation of price here. I wanna talk about a couple fees that are showing up down below. You see the Florida dock stamp and the license. Those could be the title and license fees just make sure that you check with your state DMV sites to make sure those numbers are accurate. They look like they likely are, but make sure. All right, now there's three categories of fees right here in a row. Pre-delivery service charge, $795. Electronic filing, $239. Tag agency fee, $57.50. Now you notice there's a double asterisk behind all three of those fees. I wanna share with you what they actually are. The electronic filing fee, there is no such thing as a charged electronic filing fee from your state, first of all. That's just another fancy name for dealer dock fee. But when we look at these double asterisks down below, it says, pre-delivery service charge, electronic filing fee, and tag agency fee. This charge represents costs and profits, profits to the dealer, inspecting, cleaning, and adjusting vehicles and preparing documents related to sale. I wanna share something with you guys. This is pure nonsense. The reason why dealer retail on vehicles are much higher than private party on vehicles is because dealers are responsible for inspecting, cleaning, and adjusting vehicles. They don't have any reason whatsoever to add in additional fees for those services that gives them the opportunity to charge an exorbitantly high retail price for a vehicle to begin with. Again, the reason there's a difference between dealer retail and private party is because dealers are generally inspecting, fixing, cleaning, adjusting vehicles. Exactly what they're putting down there and creating additional itemized charges for you. So all they did was take this sale price of $29,995 and jack it up by the additional cost of $795, the $239, and the $5750 for a new actual charged sale price on the vehicle. Don't let your dealer do this to you. This next vehicle we've blocked out, the Your Make Model VIN. It has a retail price of $28,680. There are savings here of $2,180. Now, this buyer appears to be a little savvy because under accessories, service contract, and gap, those are all zeros. That's what it says on all of my personal car contracts because I don't buy any of that stuff. Then there is registration of $150. 
possibly that is the state fee. And I say possibly because that fee usually has some sense on it as well. Again, it's not a really big deal given what the numbers are, but ask the dealer to itemize what it actually is. And it's very likely dollars and cents. And then right below it is title inspection and dock fee. That could be nothing more than just a dock fee, but they're going to give it multiple titles so you're less inclined to ask about it. The dock fee on the contract should not ever be more than $75 no matter what state you're in. And any state that tries to charge you a dock fee more than $75 and claims it's due to their state law, that's hogwash by the way, all legislators ever did was pass laws saying you have to charge customers the same. So the dealer following the passage of the law in their state ripped off the very first customer after the passage of that law to the tune of hundreds of dollars or even possibly a thousand bucks. And then they ripped off every single customer the same after that. So if you're sitting in a dealership that says our dock fee has to be eight ninety nine dollars because that's what we charge everybody. Well, you know what? Pay them a $75 dock fee, but subtract the difference between $899 and $75 and take that money out of the sale price of the vehicle and then go ahead and let them put $899 in your contract. In the end, you still won't have paid any more than $75 for a dock fee. Let's jump here to the 2018 Mazda CX-5. On this contract, we have a sale price of $24,100, a discount of $5,106. Adjusted sale price, 18994 Now, this is what the negotiated sale price of the customer is, the 18994 Let me show you how the dealer fattens that up to an actual charged sale price. They add $250 pre-delivery service charge to this vehicle. It's a used car, you guys. This didn't come from the manufacturer anywhere else. This is just the dealer adding on. And then there's a temp tag of $2 and mostly these little nickel and dime fees are added in to make you think that they're possibly state fees and fees you have to pay. Again, this is hogwash. It's two bucks, but I wouldn't pay it. There's an electronic filing fee of $175. Again, this is just a fancy name for a dock fee. I would reduce that to 75 bucks. There's a battery fee of $1.50 for what? And then a dealership fee of $6.99. So again here, you see what they did to your negotiated sale price? They jacked it up with all of these fees. So here's your new charged sale price because that's all that happened here. I hope all of this proved to be productive for you and you learned something about looking at your contracts in the future. Everything I shared with you on these contract examples happens to also be exactly what I do to review a contract for a car buyer. It's simple enough. You saw several examples. You can certainly do this yourself, but we're always happy to help you out if you need it. For you dealers who came here today looking for another opportunity to whine, I'll make you a deal. Quit deceiving people to fatten your numbers after you already agreed on a price, and I'll stop telling people you're just trying to steal for them. Deal? Do you think you could also stop telling people you're losing money on every deal like you're some kind of charity? Charities don't build multi-million dollar facilities like you do to sell cars. Casinos do that, and they aren't losing money to their customers either. All right, if you appreciated the video today, consider giving us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And do me a favor, would you? Include hashtag the homework guy in your comments below. Share the video on social media with your friends and use the hashtag again. With time, the accumulation of information and tips on hashtag the homework guy will be phenomenal. If you watched all the videos on this channel, send me an email and let me know what you learned. How did you apply the techniques to win on your last car deal? Perhaps I'll send you one of my super high intensity training graduate level shirts for your diploma. For those of you who like to say thanks with a tip, I'll leave the links for PayPal and the Cash App in the description box below. I've helped millions of car buyers with videos, free contract reviews, market updates, and much more. And will continue to keep you up to date with videos like this one in the days ahead. Do me another favor, would you? For any of you who got a smoking hot deal, put it in the comment section below and share so others can benefit from your great experience. By sharing your shopping stories, you're adding to the super high intensity training everyone gets by visiting the Homework Guy channel. That calls for a knuckle bump. We are literally exploding on the web right now, folks. Thanks to all of you coming back to visit, sharing it with your family and friends, and being a part of bringing awareness to shoppers in the auto industry. You guys rock. That's it for now. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care, everyone.